Yeah, good morning, children. How are you? I think all are fine at your home. Is it? Yeah, yes. In previous class, we have discussed about plasma membrane and its functions and etc. etc. Information about plasma membrane. Today, we will discuss about plasma membrane activities. That is osmosis process, filtration process, diffusion mechanism. Hi, no. How can you find the plasma membrane in animals? Okay. Yes. Let us watch that activity videos. Okay. Yes, children. Here's a cell on your screen. We have already seen that the various organelles inside it are compactly packed inside this delicate membrane called the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. We've even seen that the cell membrane makes use of diffusion process to transport gas and water molecules in and out of the cell. However, diffusion is not the only process employed. There are a few more on the list. Let's have a look at these methods in this video. Tell me one thing, how do we transport water from a lower height to a higher height? We need a pump. Because this does not happen on its own. A force or some energy is required to pull the water upwards. Similarly, in a cell, some molecules have to be carried inside or moved outside the cell. This requires energy to be spent. The energy used is in the form of ATP molecules. This is called as active transport. That is, active transport requires expenditure of energy. The transportation is carried out by protein molecules present on the cell membrane. On the other hand, diffusion does not require energy. Hence, it's a type of passive transport. So movement of molecules without spending energy, as in case of diffusion, is passive transport. Similarly, movement of molecules across the membrane with the expense of energy is active transport. Now let's get to know one more interesting concept named osmosis. Have we ever come across this term osmosis? Well, quite often. But what exactly do we mean by this? Osmosis is defined as the movement of water from higher water concentration to lower water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So let's say we have this container which is partitioned by this semi-permeable membrane. Now we add sugar solutions at both these sides. However, the concentration of each is different. Here we add concentrated sugar solution while here dilute sugar solution. That means the concentration of water in this solution is obviously more compared to this. So after some time, we see water molecules moving from this side of the partition to this side. And how long will this movement take place? It will occur till the concentration of water is balanced, that is, equalized on both the sides. This is nothing but osmosis. Let's learn some more interesting concepts about osmosis and cell transport in the next video. Osmosis in Raisins In this module, you will learn how osmosis takes place in raisins. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher solvent concentration to a region of lower solvent concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. In our body, various nutrients are transported through osmosis. Since it is difficult to observe osmosis in our bodies, let us learn about this process by observing it in raisins. The materials that are required for this activity are a beaker, water, concentrated sugar solution, and raisins. Let us begin the activity. Take a beaker. Fill half of it with water and put in five or six raisins. Leave them undisturbed for about four to five hours 
and then observe any changes. What do you observe? A. All the raisins in the water have swollen. Their size and volume has increased. They look much bigger than they originally were. Now to understand the process better, let us do another small activity. Take another beaker filled with concentrated sugar solution. Now add the swollen raisins in it and leave the beaker undisturbed for about four to five hours. Now, let us observe the raisins. Look, the raisins have shrunk. This means that the size and volume of the raisins has decreased. Now that you have observed the changes in both the cases, let us look at the explanation for these changes. In this activity, the raisin resembles a cell and its outer membrane acts as a semi-permeable membrane which allows water molecules to move through it. Consider the first case where the raisins were kept in water. The water has a higher solvent concentration than the solvent concentration inside the raisins. Now, due to difference in concentration, an osmotic gradient is set up, which results in water molecules moving from the water into the raisins. This type of osmosis is also known as endosmosis. This is why the raisins, when kept in water, swell up. On the other hand, in the second case, where the swollen raisins were kept in concentrated sugar solution, they shrink. Here, yeah, the outside medium has a lower solvent concentration than the medium inside the raisins, which means that here of sugar solution acts as a hypertonic solution. Due to the difference in concentration, exosmosis occurs, which causes the water molecules to move from the raisins into the sugar solution. It results in the raisins shrinking. From these activities, you can conclude that when raisins are kept in water, endosmosis occurs, due to which water enters the raisins and causes them to swell. However, when raisins are kept in concentrated sugar solution, exosmosis occurs, due to which the raisins shrink and become flaccid. In this module, you have learned that osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher solvent concentration to a region of lower solvent concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. When raisins are kept in water, they increase in size due to endosmosis. When raisins are kept in concentrated sugar solution, they shrink due to exosmosis. We have learned that separation of a mixture can be done by decantation. But can we separate all the mixtures by the process of decantation? Let us perform an activity to understand this. Take freshly prepared tea. Decant tea from tea leaves. Look at the decanted tea. What do you see? You will see that a few leaves are still in your tea. Thus, we can conclude that we cannot separate all the mixtures by the process of decantation. Then how do we separate all the tea leaves from the tea? Now take a strainer and pour the tea through it. Observe both tea and the strainer. What do you see in the strainer? You will see that all the tea leaves remain in the strainer. This process of separation of a mixture with the help of a strainer or a filter is called filtration. We will now perform an activity to learn about the process of filtration. Take soil and water mixture in a glass beaker. 
Now take a small piece of cotton cloth. Take another glass beaker and put the cloth on top of it. Now pour the mixture through the cloth. What do you observe? You will observe that soil particles remained in the cloth while the water passes through the cloth and gets collected in the second beaker. Do you know why? This is because cotton cloth acts as a filter. Let us learn how a cotton cloth acts as a filter. In a piece of cloth, small holes or pores are there in between the woven threads. It is actually these small pores that act as a filter. The soil particles are bigger in size than these pores. So they cannot pass through these pores and remain in the cloth. While water molecules being smaller than the pore size of the cloth can easily pass through the cloth. Thus, by using a filter, we can separate out components of a mixture. We have learned that clothes act as a filter. Apart from clothes, a filter paper is another type of filter that has very fine pores in it. Let us learn how to filter substances by using a filter paper. A filter paper is folded in the form of a cone. This folded filter paper is fixed onto a funnel. The mixture to be separated is then poured on the filter paper. Solid particles in the mixture do not pass through it and remain on the filter. While the liquid can easily pass through it and gets separated from the solid particles. In this way, we can filter liquid from a mixture by using a filter paper. To demonstrate osmosis using potato tuber. Materials required. Two big potato tubers. Beakers half filled with water. Pins. Knife. Sugar solution. Water. Procedure. Take two large sized potatoes. Peel off their skin and make their base flat. Make a hollow cavity in the center of each. Fill the potato marked A with sugar solution. Fill B with plain water to serve as control. Set each in different beakers half fill with water and mark as A and B. Mark the initial level of solution or water in the cavity in both the sets by inserting the pins. Leave them undisturbed for 2 to 3 hours. After two to three hours, observation, the solution in the cavity A rises. In the control experiment, there is no change in water level. Inference, in setup A, water molecules have moved across the semi-permeable cell membrane into the cavity. Whereas in B,
there is no movement of water molecules can be seen because concentration of water molecules is same at both the sides. semi-permeable membrane by using egg membrane. Click each tab to know more. To prepare semi-permeable membrane by using egg membrane. To perform this activity, following materials are required. Three beakers, two egg membranes, sugar, water, thread, measuring jar, disposable syringe, cloth and tablespoon. Take the eggs that are soaked in the dilute HCL solution. Wash the eggs under tap water and wipe them with cloth. Now, 
Remove the internal content present in the egg membranes carefully by making a pencil sized hole in them. And wash the membrane with fresh water. Now take one egg membrane and fill it with 10 ml of saturated sugar solution which is already prepared in a beaker by using syringe. Next, tie the mouth of the membrane with the help of a thread. Now take a beaker containing 100 ml of tap water and dip the membrane into it. Leave it aside for one night. Next, take the second membrane and fill it with 10 ml of tap water with the help of syringe and tie its mouth with the help of thread. Take another beaker containing 100 ml of saturated sugar solution. Use the sugar solution which is already prepared and place the second membrane inside this beaker. Measure the contents of the egg membranes and beakers and note on the observations. It is observed that in case of beaker 1, the water level in beaker is decreased and the sugar solution present inside the egg membrane is increased. In case of beaker 2, the sugar solution present inside the beaker is increased and the tap water present inside the egg membrane is decreased. From this experiment, we learned that the level of solutions of egg membrane or beaker is increasing only when they have the sugar solution in them. The sugar molecules are too large to pass through the membrane. Hence, the water molecules pass into the sugar solution. This decreases the level of water and increases the level of sugar solution. This increase of sugar solution is due to osmosis across the semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane allows only certain materials to pass through the cells. chapter cell its structure and functions here let us perform an activity to observe the cell membrane in real leaf click each tab to know more take a real leaf and break it to take out a peel Take a permanent slide. Place this peel on a slide and put a drop of water on it. Next, cover it with a cover slip. Place the permanent slide mount under microscope and absorb the light portion of a leaf under it. It is observed that the leaf peel contains green colored granules termed as chloroplasts. These chloroplasts contain chlorophyll which helps in the process of photosynthesis. Take concentrated salt solution. Now add one or two drops of concentrated salt solution on the leaf peel. 
leave it aside for 5 to 10 minutes. Cover the slide with cover slip and place it under microscope. Next, observe the changes under microscope. It is observed that the water present in Rio leaf comes out which results in shrinking of cytoplasm and cell membrane. From this activity, we learn that when a soil solution is poured over a peel of rio leaf, the water present inside the rio leaf comes out. This leads to the shrinking of cytoplasm along with the cell boundary. The outer boundary of colored area is called cell membrane. This cell membrane is separated from the cell wall. Cell membrane is flexible and mainly consists of lipids and proteins. Cell membrane is the outermost layer of the cell structure. It separates cytoplasm from external environment. This is also called plasma membrane. Functions of the cell membrane. It defines the size and shape of the cell. It encloses the cytoplasm and protects it from external environment. The cell membrane plays a vital role in maintaining the balance of various substances inside the cell body. The exchange of substances through the membrane happens selectively. Hence, this membrane is termed as selective permeable membrane. This important characteristic of the membrane helps in controlling the exchange of substances between the cell and its external environment. These all videos are belongs to plasma membrane activity videos. Okay? Thank you. Thank you everyone. Stay at your home and stay safe. Okay? Thank you children.